So that is my case. If he's able to refute the two points of my uh, of my uh, the two premises, since my argument is twofold, if he's able to do that, I say it again. I will cut my thumb on this uh, video feed. So I'll let it to him, and we'll see uh, what arguments he has to present to refute my position. All right. Let me first say I I don't want you to cut your tongue. That's that's not something no, I want you to do. That, that I, well, I'm glad. I am very glad. Um, my opening remark would be we have no reason why we ought to believe what the Bible says. That is the, the penultimate of, of everything that I would possibly go with from there because I don't know what reason we have to believe that the Bible is accurate or true uh, and I think all of your work would lay squarely in front of you to demonstrate that it is. Now, there have been uh, mentions in the Bible and in, in, in the Apocryphal uh, and, and, and all of the, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls and all of that about places that exist, but we can't demonstrate that the facts are there for the, the biblical narrative. We, uh, we, we don't find uh, evidence for... Uh, Moses, we don't find evidence for Abraham. In fact, the Abrahamic story shows that it's not correct because of uh, camels not existing in the supposed time period that Abraham existed. Um, we also, you, you brought up about the, uh, the seven days. Our seven days are not named after anything but Greek gods, which would kind of go against your initial claim that we, we base our seven day, therefore the Sabbath, on the biblical narrative. That's demonstrably not true. We don't know much about uh, the, the times that the, the Bible was written, but we do know that Paleo-Hebrew, the original language that the first parts of the Bible were written in, and the earliest book being Job, Paleo-Hebrew doesn't date back past the 10th century BCE. Uh, we, 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 we're pretty sure that the book of Job was written around 500 to 800 BCE, and that's the earliest book of the Bible. We don't know what the Bible says is true. You can believe it is, but you can't demonstrate it is. And yes, we can. Yes, we did. And that would be the only place that I can think I would be able to anchor any point from. You can't demonstrate that what the Bible says is true, and you'd have to do that before you demonstrate that the seventh day Sabbath is true. All of your work, all of your work, would lay squarely in front of you to demonstrate that the Bible is true, therefore we need to follow the Sabbath. So that would be uh, my uh, rejoinder, if you will. Uh, I, I don't know how you can make the Bible make sense until you've demonstrated that the Bible can be uh, relied upon as a reliable source. So I think that's where you have to base everything from. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to double check if I'm recording. I think I am recording. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, introduction. So let me uh, stipulate again what are the two premises of my, on which my case is built upon. First, the God of the Hebrews makes exclusive claims to the seven-day Sabbath, uh, to the seven, uh, to the Sabbath, which is a directly linked to the seven days, uh, to the seven days cycle. Let me repeat. The God of the Hebrews makes exclusive claims to the Sabbath, which is directly linked to the uh, seven-day cycle. That's first. Secondly, the God of the he Hebrews prophesies or predicts the universal application of the seven-day cycle uh, of the Sabbath by the means of uh, the seven-day cycle, since they're directly linked, since every other nation kept a different cycle to honor and worship their own gods, therefore demonstrating his power over all things, heavenly and earthly. So now, according to, uh, at this time to respond, so um, from my understanding, he's saying that because I'm appealing to a source that he doesn't believe in, uh, I would have to first uh, validate the, the, the source. I have validated the source, and by the two points I've just established, 
Uh, first off, he doesn't have to believe the Bible exists. He can say it's a fair, fair tale. The only logical outcome that comes from that is, okay, you believe it's a, a fair tale, so the two points still apply. There was a book written by people that supposedly is a fairy tale that everyone is submitted to. That's that's the only point that I'm trying to to, to to address right now. So if your point is the book is not something that's reliable, so you're submitted. That's even worse for you because it's better to be submitted to God than submitted to a source that is not reliable. Because my two points still stands. First off, the God of the Hebrews makes it is the only one who makes claim to the seven day cycle. If you can provide me any source that claims uh, that makes claims to the seventh cycle that predates the the Bible, I will cut my tongue. I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> I accept. Secondly, that the God of the Hebrews prophesies, predicts that he will universally apply the seven-day cycle. This is something that can be tested. So there was something that was written 3,000, 4,000 years ago by whoever he wants to claim it's written by. I mean, I believe it's inspired by God. He wants to say it's from people who are not reliable. Okay, we'll take either either one. Either it's from God or it's either from reli- uh, from people that, who are not reliable. No problem, a fairy tale. And we can validate or verify whether or not what was written uh, what is written is true. Three thousand years ago, uh, three thousand years after, four thousand years after, we can validate that everyone keeps a seven-day cycle. So the choice is up to him. Whether he wants to say it's God who submitted the world, Jesus Christ, or a bunch of Hebrews who wrote a fairy tale. So those are the choices that's in front of him. I didn't speak about Moses. I didn't speak about Job. I didn't speak about Abraham. I spoke of the God of the Hebrews. If I can validate the God of the Hebrews, everything else is validated. So I repeat, God makes exclusive claims to the seven-day cycle, which is uh, uh, to the Sabbath, which is directly linked to the seven-day cycle. He has to refute that. But it's twofold. Even if he could find somebody or our ancient source document that claims to hold to a seven-day cycle before, uh, the, the the Hebrews, he still has to validate, uh, uh, to refute the second point. Because this is the point that demonstrates his power. The God of the Hebrews predicts, prophesies, that he will submit all nations to that cycle. The last nation to fall is the USSR in, in the 1940s. So he has accomplished that. This generation, our generation, has seen the demonstration of his power, one country after the other, the domino effect, every nation was submitted to the power of his word, demonstrating that he is God, sovereign over all things. Not only earthly, all nations, but e- even heavenly. Because the, uh, the, the, the cycles, the weekly cycles made for the worship of the gods of the nation have been replaced by the one that was instituted from Genesis. The one that God gave to Adam. So right there, I have demonstrated that Jesus is Lord overall since 2,000 years ago. He said he is Lord of the Sabbath when it was not popular for him to say so. His nation, uh, his kingdom was not established yet. But 2,000 years later, he has given his children the wisdom to demonstrate that he is Lord over all things. So th- that is my presentation again, my refutation of his point. He doesn't have to believe. You don't have to be a believer. But the demonstration of what was written 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago can be tested today. So his choices is one of the two. It's either the God of the Hebrews or Hebrews or, or some Hebrews that wrote uh, unreliable sources. Either way, he's still submitted. So. Yes, we will. Let's stop them insect.
vultures. <laughs> 